Okay, today we're doing a radiator install on a 2014 Can-Am Maverick. This is the 1000. Uh, really simple install on this. I've already loosened all the bolts. Um, I actually have all the bolts gone on the driver's side, but I'll show you where the location is um, for removing this. First, I start with this bumper. Uh, you're going to have a bolt here. And then you're going to have two right here on these plastic pieces. And then you're also going to have one behind, just under the radiator, on this top tube of the bumper. Okay. Well, I like starting with these bottom ones. I loosen them all up so you got them loose. Um, Pull this big long one across from the bottom. Like I said, there's one that is just under the radiator. Kind of tucked back in there. Remove all of them and pull that bumper out of your way. Next, you're going to want to remove the hood. And you're going to have two bolts up here. You're going to have one just right here. You're going to have two underneath here. And then there's going to be one tucked up just behind this other one. Pull all them and remove this plastic grill Now it's loose, just hanging there. There are two little plastic push pieces that are just inside of this slot here on both sides. All you need to do is simply pull uh, the grill forward on both sides. It'll pop loose. And you can go ahead and slide that plastic grill down to where you can access the radiator. Now that you access the radiator, you go ahead, I'd start draining the fluid. Uh, this doesn't have a drain, so you're going to have to pull this uh, passenger sized hose off. I've already drained the fluid. Uh, the top one, you can loosen the clamp. It's kind of tough to get off until you can remove the radiator. Next, what you're going to want to do Come over to the driver's side, and you're going to have a clip for the fan, and there's that top radiator hose. I'll we'll loosen that up, and then on the passenger side, you're going to have this little vent tube for the fan. What you're going to want to do is go ahead and remove or slide that out of all the, the zip ties and stuff that it's holding it on. Get that loose. Get that fan clip loose. Then there's going to be two mounting bolts for the radiator. And they're just in front of the air box under the hood. They're just right here. This side's easy to get to. This one underneath here on top of the radiator they're kind of a bugger to get to. Um, I have already got the nuts loose. So I'll go ahead and pull them out. Hey, now with everything unhooked, the hoses, the fan vent tube, and the fan clip, what you're going to want to do 
is just get a hold of the bottom of the radiator, lift up, and pull forward. And this will enable the whole fan shroud and the radiator to come out. Okay, now that you have the radiator out, you're going to want to remove the two rubber grommets that are on these pins on the bottom. You know, they may have fallen off when you pulled it out. Set them off to the side. And you're going to have two rubber grommets with metal bushings in the top of these tabs here. What you don't want to do is pop them out. Set them off to the side. Real quick here I'll show you the differences between our radiator and the stock radiator. Uh, the stock one's inch and a half thick and is only single pass. Uh, the shroud is a parcel shroud um, so it doesn't really utilize the fan that much. Um, really all that's to it. With our radiator We have a full shroud, same size fan, 11 inch ball fan, uh, it has the same uh, electrical clip as the stock one so you won't have to worry about any wiring or messing around there. And our radiator is also two and a quarter inches thick and it is also triple passed. By triple passed, what that means is It comes in the top, comes down and hits this baffle, comes across the top third, comes down and hits this baffle that's two thirds of the way down on the passenger side, comes back across, drops down, and then goes across the bottom third. With that triple pass and the combination with the full shroud, you're going to utilize everything um, that your cooling system has to offer. Okay, now we take the rubber bushings that add the, uh, the rubber grommet with the metal bushings. We're going to put these in the fan shroud. Set that off to the side. Put the rubber bushings on the pins. Now you'll be ready to install the radiator in the outfit. Okay. Next you're going to grab your fan shroud and your radiator mounting bolts. Uh, what I like to do is run the bolt from the air box towards the front. Make sure you get your washer and nut put on the front side of that rubber grommet. Next, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and snug them up to where you can still move the shroud around a little bit. Or if you happen to have an uh, extra set of hands, you can go ahead and have somebody hold the shroud to where it's just sitting level with this line. You can do it by snugging them up to where they move and hold or you can hold it with your knee. Go ahead and get them tightened up. A lot easier to get to than they were pulling the radiator out. Now that you have the shroud mounted in, you can hook up the fan clip and be done with the uh, fan shroud itself. 
As you notice, it's mounting a little differently. Uh, instead of using the shroud to mount the radiator, we're going to use the radiator to support the weight and the top of the fan shroud to keep it from flopping around. Next, what you're going to want to do is grab your quarter inch bolts that came in the, holding the shroud to the radiator. Uh, simply, you're going to want to hook up your top radiator hose as you slide that up in and just backwards from what you had to do to remove the stock radiator. So you're going to want to get that top hose on there or you won't get it on. afterwards. Just lift that up. It is a snug fit. Get that to where it'll drop down in the two holes with the rubber grommets. And you're going to want to hold that against the fan shroud. And go ahead and get your four shroud, shroud bolts started. Uh, you don't want to tighten any of them up until you can get all four started. Get them in there finger tight. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up after I get this front on so I can continue showing you. Finish hooking up your hoses. Now that you've got all that done, reverse the way we took this apart. Slide that up. You don't want to slide them rubber uh, push plastic push pins in and I like to get these bottom ones started that way it'll hold everything in place you're going to reuse all your screws that came off of the grill and go ahead and tighten everything back up uh, I like to pull the grill out just a little bit and then tighten these ones the top uh, up that way there isn't any chance of rubbing. It is close, but there is nothing touching. So just like to allow myself a little more room if possible. Go ahead and tighten all them up. Okay, now at this point I went ahead and tightened up all the grill bolts, uh, put on all my hoses, tightened up the hose clamps, double checked to make sure that I got the fan clip hooked. Um, uh, next, I want to take the grill or the bumper. And you're going to want to make sure that these plastic pieces here go below the skid plate. So these will go between the skid plate will go between the plastic and the frame. Next, go ahead and put these top ones in. Get them started finger tight. 
Now we're going to want to tighten it up until you can get the other side started. I'm going to go ahead and get the plastic one started. Now at this point, all you do is make sure that you tighten everything up. Uh, you don't have any bolts, washers missing. Uh, wouldn't hurt to go make sure you got your hoses tight, the fan clip hooked. At this point you can go ahead and fill it up with fluid, run it, make sure you get all your air bubbles out. And I hope you enjoy. Thank you.